Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new x86 powered single board computer that I've been waiting on for a while, around eight months. Now this was actually slated to release about six months ago, but I finally got my hands on one and it's known as the 680 Edge. Now the Edge really comes from the Edge computing part of everything, and uh, that's exactly what this was created for, but it can be used for so much more. Media playback, signage, industrial applications, given the I.O. here, emulation, and even gaming. And to tell you the truth, this thing actually has quite a bit of power given its form factor, but as you can see, they did need to add a pretty substantial cooler here given the wattage that this runs at, because this is actually powered by a Ryzen 7 6800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, RDNA 3 graphics, and it's paired up with 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megatransfers per second. There's a lot that I want to go over in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. This is actually available over on AliExpress in limited quantities right now and I'm not exactly sure how many more the manufacturer is going to be making. They did plan on going to Ryzen 7000, but with this, like I mentioned, we get the 6800U. And with the packaging that I received, I got a 54 watt, 12 volt charger and the board itself. They also offered different accessories like a seven inch to a 10 inch display mounting system. They've even got a little aluminum case over there. I'll leave some links in the description. And real quick, I did want to give you kind of a size comparison. So what we've got here is a Raspberry Pi 5. We've got the 680 Edge and a Minus 4 Mini PC. I mean, we're right there in the middle of all of it. Definitely coming in much larger than the Raspberry Pi 5, but it does pack a lot more performance. And when this board was originally shown off about eight months ago, it actually had a blower style cooler, but I guess they went with this larger aluminum cooler to keep it nice and chilly. It does run it up to 35 watts, and we can actually use a third party app to go higher. But for this video, we're going to be sticking at 35 watts here. And when it comes to IO, up front here, we've got a single full size gigabit Ethernet port two full-size USB 2.0 ports, and two full-size USB 3.0 ports. It also has a micro HDMI port over on the side. And over here, we've got our power button, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size HDMI. This will support 4K 60 out and our power in. Now, one thing I actually like about this is it runs on 12 volts as opposed to 19 with some of the other mini PCs that we've seen with the same chipset. So we could make this a little more portable, Going from 19 to 12 is a lot easier to handle, and of course, if it was 5 volt, it'd be awesome, but we are working with the Ryzen 7 6000 series APU here. And on the bottom, we do have an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module and an M.2 SSD slot. This will support an NVMe SSD PCIe 3.0 up to 4 terabytes. I'm just going with the simple Kingston 512 gigabyte drive with Windows 11 Pro installed on it. Now, since we have that Ryzen 7 6800U, we do get 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 GHz, and a boost up to 4.7. But I've actually noticed that I think it's down clock to 3.9 from the BIOS. And it could just be that we're at 35 watts and it's not boosting high enough to get those clocks up there. But I'm averaging around 3.9 GHz here. But either way, I mean, we're still getting some pretty good performance out of this little chip. Along with this, we do get the Radeon 680M iGPU. 12 compute units based on RDNA 2, and this does run it up to 2200 megahertz. 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 6400 megatransfers per second. And we've got that M.2 drive, which will support a 2280 or 2230 PCIe 3.0 M.2 SSD. Okay, so here it is, and I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed with the performance here. 
This only goes up to 35 watts. I'll show you that in a second. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U. I think the RAM is really helping out here. It's running at 6400 mega transfers per second. And usually with the many PCs in the market that have the 6800U, 4800 megahertz RAM is usually the max. Sometimes you can overclock. I've been able to overclock some to 6000. But the 6400 mega transfers per second really does help out with that iGPU. And of course, we've got that 680M. I've got two gigs of VRAM dedicated here. I could go into the BIOS and dedicate a little more. But real quick, I'll show you. Stress test. This jumps up. 35 comes back down to around 30. And on average throughout gaming, we're around 32, 33 watts. Now, we could get better performance out of the 6800U at higher wattage. But you can see this CPU temp is climbing up a bit. But so far, haven't hit thermal throttle, and performance is really great for what we have here. Now, uh, first thing I wanted to show off here was some 4K video playback. So we'll go 4K demo here. And, you know, we've tested the 6800U extensively. It is great for 4K. Full screen. And since I didn't install a Wi-Fi module, I'm just using Ethernet here. But throughout, we shouldn't have an issue with 4K video playback. Again, we've tested this quite a bit on Ryzen 6000, and these do a great job. Even two streams, so we've got full-size HDMI and mini HDMI over on the side. Two 4K60 streams. You're going to be pulling around 25 watts from that APU, but it'll definitely do it. And with this, throughout, we only had one drop frame, and that's really from the initial load-in. So yeah, this thing would work out great for a little media playback device, but the main thing I'm really interested in here is PC gaming. I know we're at a lower wattage when you compare it to some of the other mini PCs. We can take them up to 65 watts, but we do have much faster RAM. So let's test out some games and see how this thing does. And the first one we have here is Spider-Man Miles Morales 720p Low. It's been a while since I tested this on these RDNA 2 iGPUs, and performance has definitely increased here. We did get an average of 62 FPS, but you can see it does kind of fall below every once in a while. Not too bad, and you know, turning V-Sync on won't get any screen tearing. You can actually play through this game. OG Skyrim 1080p medium, we got an average of 109 FPS. I could go up to high with this. I just initially went in at medium thinking we'd have to be at medium settings, but it's well over that 60 mark and it's playing just fine. And again, this is the original version. If you wanted to go with the remastered version, you probably have to take it down to low or medium 900p. Here's Forza Horizon 5. We're at low settings, 720p right now. What I want to do is take it up to 1080 and we're just going to keep it at low or I'd have to reboot the game. So we're going to go from 720 up to 1080 and I think this is going to handle it. And again, you know, keeping an eye on Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. We're averaging around 32 to 33 watts with everything that I tested. And if you take a look at that CPU temp right there at around 89 degrees. Now from the BIOS, this is actually set the thermal throttle at 93. I haven't hit it yet, but I'm sure we could hit thermal throttle with this, especially at that 35 watt threshold. It's a pretty beefy cooler and the fan is spinning up. It's not super loud. I'm guessing it's just from being an aluminum cooler with no like copper plate or anything like that. I also wanted to run the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're at 900p low settings and we could definitely stand to lower this resolution a bit because we only average 57 FPS, even at low. We could drop this down to the lowest and definitely get over 60, not by much, or we could introduce a little bit of resolution scale. Upgraded drivers and optimizations to the game have definitely brought the frame rate up, but we're still only at 720p original settings here, and you get those dips under 60. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, and when I say low, I mean we go into the settings and turn everything to low. The preset of low really doesn't take everything down, we've still got some stuff set right there at medium. And even with it set up like this at 720p, we still can't get a steady 60 out of it. So with some more FSR, taking it to let's say performance, because we're at auto right now, it's probably right there around balance the way everything looks. I was kind of hoping to go in here and get a nice locked 60 with it.
Another thing I always like to take a look at is total system power consumption. And if you remember, this comes with a 48 watt power supply. Now this is plugged into a kilowatt meter while I'm doing my testing. At idle, we're around 11 watts and I am in performance mode. Average gaming jumps up to a total draw of 41 watts. But in my maximum test, while stressing out that 680M iGPU, all eight cores and 16 threads, it did overrun that 48 watt power supply, bringing it up to around 56. Usually with a 6800U kit, like in a mini PC, comes with a 64 watt power supply, and I think that's exactly what they need here. It'll keep it right under there, but that's really an extreme test, and a lot of people won't hit that kind of wattage. Overall, I do think it's a great performer. I love the form factor, but there are a lot of 6800U mini PCs that you can pick up right now on Amazon. So, you know, it's really up to you. If you're looking for a smaller form factor, then this would be great. But some of those mini PCs do offer a lot more I.O. and sometimes you can pick them up much cheaper. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to AliExpress where you can pick one of these up. And I do plan on making at least one more video with this. We have to install SteamOS or some kind of variant so we can kind of get that Steam Deck interface on this thing and see how it performs. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.